Hello and welcome again to this video lecture series. And in this video lecture, we are going to learn the recursion. What is the concept of recursion? So basically what we hear about the recursion is that when a function call itself again and again. So this is not a complete definition. So the complete definition is that when a function call itself again and again until unless the base criteria or the termination criteria is met. So let's implement uh, this concept. Uh, okay, uh, so I'm elaborating uh, that same concept with the previous uh, program. Uh, so main is our function. So I'm calling a main within this block. Means I'm calling a main within the main. Okay, let's uh, compile and run this program. So what will happen now? So now our execution starts from the main. I make a function call to this and I'm printing the value of A. Then again, I'm doing the same thing. And after the three function calls, I'm calling the main. Means after line number 16, my control is transferred to the 11, uh, line number 11. So again, this procedure is repeated again and again. Now here, I hadn't put any termination criteria. So that's why I went into the infinite loop. So now whenever you're using this concept, the stack, you know, the stack, the question you the stack, and if you're using the same method, eventually your program is outputting the some values according to your logic, and then the stack is full after that your program is going to terminate. So let's see uh, until our stack is overflowed. Now you can see uh, has stopped working. So this is because your stack is full. That's why uh, it can't able to run your program further. So uh, let's uh, see that how to make a proper use of recursion. Uh, let's start with the very simple program. Okay. Uh, let's okay. If mm, let's make uh, this a accessible uh, from a main, so I'm making it a global variable. Okay, if a is less than mm, thousand, okay, then call main. Okay, if that particular criteria is uh, true uh, if a is less than thousand then call main okay until this is true then it's going to call the main and if it's not true then it's not going to call the main okay you can see that this is a control mechanism in the recursion so when you are dealing with the recursion you should be very careful about this thing okay now let's uh, take uh, some useful typical example uh, so let's go for the factorial program uh, fact so here my function is fact so here i'm going to ask from the user uh, enter the number to find the factorial okay so here I'm going to store that variable, uh, store that value in some variable. Um, let's take n or i as an input. So I have to declare i, so it should be int i, and I'm going to pass this i to fact. I'm calling that function with the input argument i. Okay, so here. Uh, I have to give an argument, let's suppose n, so here, uh, so what's the factorial, uh, factorial, uh, let's take an example, uh, if I'm going to find the factorial of a 3, that would be 3 into 2 into 1, so now how this is going to be uh, executed, so means I have to repeat something for this until 1, if n equals to equals to 1 then I'm going to 
return n. So if it is one, I am going to throw one to that function. Else, okay, I have to declare a uh, integer that is the result. Initially, it's a zero. Else, uh, res equals to n into fact. So here I am making a call to this fact within that block with n minus 1. So how it's going to work? So I'm saying that let's suppose i is 3. So now n equal to i and i is equal to 3. So here n is a 3. So uh, 3 equal to, equal to 1 it's false. So here res is equal to 3. Okay, so instead of res uh, I'm going to use return. So no need to use res over here. So as we are returning something, so here should not void, here should be an int. So if n equal to equal to 1, okay, then return n, return 1, else it's going to use n into 1 less than that. So here uh, it's like 3 factorial, 3 factorial, it's like 3 into 2 factorial and then it's make 3 into 2 into 1 factorial. So here the question goes in this way like n, so which is this and factorial of that thing. So here this thing I'm putting it in a function. Whenever I need, I'm following it again and again for one factorial. So this is our termination criteria or base criteria. So when n is equal to is equal to n, I'm not further making any call to this function. So I'm simply returning the one to it. Okay. So here, uh, as this is returning me an integer value, so I'm going to print that value on a screen with a C out. So here. So let's uh, give a 3, 3 to the 6, 6 into 1, 6. So here we got a answer. Uh, keep watching and subscribe to my YouTube channel for the latest update and videos.